Hey guys, it's Sona, welcome back to my channel, and today's video is going to be a bit different from usual. Well, actually very different from usual because today we're going to be reading scary stories that you guys sent to me in my Discord server. I was sent a lot of really, really good spooky stories. Some are true, some are not true. Some are even Roblox based, and some are regular scary stories. If you can't handle scary stories, then this video probably isn't for you. However, I promise that I did not pick any scary stories that have gore or anything like that in them that may be triggering to some people. And just in case, for stories that may be triggering, to people, I will be sure to put a trigger warning and a timestamp for anyone who wishes to skip them. So yeah, like I said, these were all sent by my fans in my Discord server. None of these stories are actually mine, I'm just reading the stories that you guys sent me. I also figured this would be a really nice video to do considering the fact that a lot of us probably aren't gonna go trick-or-treating this year due to quarantine and all those safety issues, so I hope that videos like this one will give you more of the, that spooky satisfaction that we're all craving for Halloween season. So yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna be reading some of these stories that I picked out that I'm sure you guys will really love. I'm also going to be giving my own personal titles to the stories that do not have titles that I think will fit the stories pretty well. So yeah, let's get started. So the first scary story that we're going to be reading today is called The Cursed NPC by Ramen Dino. Once upon a Halloween night, two innocent Robloxian children went out trick-or-treating on Halloween night thinking it would be fun since they couldn't really go out to trick-or-treat in real life with each other. Hoping they would get some fun out of it, they knocked on what looked like a newly polished oak door. The door slowly creaked open and the laggy NPC came out and said trick. Before the kids could even say trick or treat, confused, the children were quickly taken into the house and pushed onto the floor. Release my soul and I'll let you go, chanted the deranged NPC. The children were getting scared, knowing this was not part of the game. Soon they found out that they couldn't leave. Whenever they turned off their devices and turned them back on, they just continued the game. They agreed to tell their parents, yet soon they realized they weren't in their own homes anymore. They were inside the game, in real life. Panic and anxiety rose inside of them. Was this going to be the end of their lives? What would happen next? Why and how was this happening and why was it happening to them? They didn't know and for that is what frightened them most. The NPC with the new blood red frown walked towards them. It asked, release my soul and you'll get your families back. Finding themselves desperate to get out of the nightmare situation, they both asked, how do we release your soul? The NPC looked down at them and smiled like this. And as soon as the NPC had finished their response, the only thing that could be heard was screams and agony that filled the air. Yet nobody was there to witness what happened. The children were never seen again after that. Whoa, okay. Okay, this is actually super cool. Like, don't get me wrong, this was really creepy and scary, but obviously that's the point of these stories. And I gotta say, you did a really good job with this. This is actually pretty creative. I've never really thought of any, like, haunted Roblox NPC before. Like, yeah, sure, I've heard of, you know, Roblox myths or uh, hackers or something like that, but not an NPC. That's actually really clever. Like, imagine you're just playing a regular Roblox Halloween game, and then when you decide it's too scary for you and you go to leave the game, you can't leave the game because you're actually actually in the game. That is so cool. So yeah, thank you so much Ramen Dino for submitting this story. This was really cool to read. Alright, so this next one is submitted by Brain Dead Rose YouTube. I am going to give a little trigger warning because this one does have a little bit of graphic stuff at the end of it, I guess you could say. So for anyone who's sensitive to that kind of stuff, I'll put a timestamp right here so that you can skip to the next story so that you don't have to listen to this one. Now with that out of the way, let's get started. Carly had been on Roblox for many years. She first started playing October 31st. 2014 because a friend had recommended it for her. Five years later, in 2019, she was still playing Roblox. Carly loved the game so much. It was Halloween once again, and to get her ready for some scary trick-or-treating, she thought playing a scary Roblox game would be fun. Carly had always loved myths, so she searched for some games made by new myths, but unfortunately, she couldn't find any new myth games on Roblox. So she searched the words creepy or scary in the search bar. She found the most of normal games you would find if you search scary, such as scary elevator, scary stories, stuff like that. But then she came across this game. It had a disturbing picture for the thumbnail. It had a creepy girl, black eyes, a patient's dress, and the girl was staring directly at the camera, almost as if she was actually watching you. Carly thought this would be cool and scary, so she picked this game and clicked play. At first it looked like a normal game, but soon Carly had discovered something. Later, Carly's friend pounded on her door. Why wasn't Carly answering, her friend wondered. She slowly opened the door and walked in, only to find her friend's dead body severed into small pieces. Dang, well that got dark really Really fast. Now that's what I call a Roblox Halloween game gone very wrong. I don't know, I just find the concept of a Roblox character from a game coming to life and coming to get you, I find that very scary. It did get a tiny bit graphic at the end, but that's why I did put my trigger warning, so hopefully that wasn't too much for you guys who did stick through that. But yeah, again, thank you so much uh, Brain Dead Rose YouTube for sending that, that was really spooky. Alright, so this next one is made by Jolly is a Cute Handsome Man. I guess I'll call the title of the story Roblox Roleplay God 
gone wrong. It was a pretty clear night. This was the time of night a young girl at the age of 11 would go on to Royal High on Roblox and find someone to roleplay with. She made up her outfit and ran into some girl. She asked if she wanted to roleplay, and the girl said sure. They roleplayed for about 30 minutes, and then her player just stopped moving randomly. She could still chat, and she thought that the bubble pop mini game glitch, and she thought that it was just a glitch where you can't move your character, and she could still chat. So she told the girl to friend her because she was glitched. She friended her and rejoined. She rejoined in an empty room. It was like the room she was in before, but instead without the other girl that used to be there. No furniture, only walls and floors. Then they all glowed white. She was really freaked out and left. She left the game and rejoined again, and it flashed white again. She tried to close out, but she couldn't. She tried getting her parents. She walked upstairs to her parents' room, but there was nobody. She checked her little sister's room, nothing. She freaked out even more. She wanted to cry and ran downstairs to, move to Google it, seeing if she could find anything about it. She checked her Gmail, waiting for a response from Roblox support, but instead of Roblox support, she got a message with some weird numbers. She, she thought it was weird and looked more into it. The more she looked into it, she eventually found out the numbers were her IP address. The last thing her of the girl was a blood-curdling scream that the neighbors heard. Wolf kids, that's why you don't give out any of your information online. I mean, I know that's not what happened in the story, but uh, yeah, giving out your information is really dangerous because someone can find out where you live. So yeah, just don't give out any personal information or anything like that. But that aside, this was pretty creepy. I can't imagine how scary that would be, especially for a little kid to go through. So yeah, always be careful of who you chat with online because uh, sometimes their intentions aren't the best. All right, so this next story is a little bit more of a short story, but it's still really cool, so I wanted to show it anyway. This was submitted by KK. I'm gonna call this story The Boys in the Woods. Okay, so this is a fairly short one. There was a group of boys who went into the woods. They got lost, but luckily, they found an abandoned cabin to stay at. There were pictures of old men all over the walls, and the boys proceeded to make fun of the pictures as well as make faces. But one of the boys looked closer. The pictures were windows. Oh my god, that literally gave me chills, dude. That is so creepy. Like, I'm just imagining that actually happening to me. I would literally poop myself. Oh my god, like, imagine you're just looking at a picture, and it just looks like a creepy portrait, but it just looks like a creepy picture. But the more you look into it, you realize that it's actually a window and someone's staring at you. Like, that's so creepy. Uh, thank you for submitting this, KK. This was really, really cool. I like this one a lot. It was very creepy. All right, so this next one was submitted by Chloe, and it seems like a true story, so that's pretty interesting. I'll call this one The Closet. When I was little, I used to be scared of my closet. It was a walk-in closet, but it was full of stuff so I could only walk in like halfway through. But anyways, I would always sleep facing the door so I could see if anything was there. I would also put stuff in the front of the door so that it wouldn't open, but I stopped all the stuff later. Recently, the door opened when nothing was touching it, and the door had always been extremely squeaky, meaning it would make noise if it did open, so that scared me quite a bit. Now I'm still scared of it. Oh my god, like, I actually do this too. I always make sure that my closet door is closed, because, like, before I go to bed, I'm afraid there's, like, a monster or something in my closet, and I'm literally 18 years old, so don't feel bad about that. I get scared at it too, actually. But oh my god, if I, like, closed my closet door and I was positive that I closed it, and then I looked back at it and it was open, I would be really scared. Alright, so this next one is also a bit of a short one, but it also seems to be like a true story as well. This was submitted by Nor E. I'll call this story Sleep. So, this was a normal school morning where I woke up early in my room, but something felt strange. I tried to move my body, but I couldn't. All I could move were my eyes. When I looked up, I saw a black figure looking at me, and they were right in front of me. A few minutes later, I could move, but the figure was gone. By the way, this is a real story about a sleep paralysis dream that I had. Oh my god, I've never had, uh, uh, I've never had sleep paralysis before, but I've always been really terrified of getting some kind of sleep paralysis dream. If you don't know what sleep paralysis is, it's basically where uh, you're sleeping and like, I guess your soul like leaves your body or something and like you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't move. It's like a really vivid dream or something like that. I don't know the exact science behind it, but anyways, usually when you have sleep paralysis, you can't move and you wake up and there's like some kind of demon or scary monster and like it's just staring at you and like you can't move move and it's just really scary. I hope that never happens to me. I'm really sorry that happened to you. Uh, I would be terrified. This next one is a bit longer and is submitted by Mac G. I'll call this story the statue. After locking one of the mall's lesser known shops, I turned back to the center of the corridor, still studying articles of all the mall's history on my phone. I was distracted, so distracted in fact that I nearly missed one that one of the statues had now altered its stance. It was not in the same pose before. I froze. My keys jingled in response to the sudden change in momentum. I have heard the tales of a particular limb
grim configuration that held great power, but never had I witnessed it. The statue seemed almost as if it were attempting to conceal its complexion by nestling a metal nose into the crook of its left elbow while extending its right arm straight back. The left arm wrapped around its large head continued parallel to the right arm. Both hands were flat and fixed at a 45 degree angle pointing to the ceiling. I couldn't believe my eyes, but the legends were true. The statue was dabbing on me. <laughs> okay, I already knew that this story was gonna be a joke. I was like trying hard not to laugh while I was reading this. Oh my god, I'm sorry guys, I had to read this one. Thank you, Mac, for submitting this amazing story about a statue dabbing. Very cool. This next one is submitted by Gutuni. I'll call it the robot. A made-up story made by me. One night, a teenager named Charlie was doing some midnight shopping, but right after he was about to leave the store, he saw an item in the shop that had never been seen before. The item was half a meter tall and looked like a small robot. Since it was pretty cheap, Charlie bought it. The robot was placed into a box for Charlie to unbox. When he opened the box, the robot looked amazing and he decided to display it on the shelf in his bedroom. After putting it on the shelf, Charlie decided to go to sleep and examine the robot. He figured out that it could walk and even pick things up. Charlie played with the robot all day and showed the robot to his friend Jacob. After two weeks of Charlie and Jacob playing with the robot, he got bored of playing with it and eventually they completely lost interest of it. After that, the trouble had started. A week after they stopped playing with the robot, Jacob had gone missing. Jacob was in the newspaper and all across TV. After Jacob had gone missing, Charlie was throwing out the trash and noticed something behind the trash can. A corpse, a robot, and a message written in blood. Come play with me. <laughs> this is like Toy Story gone wrong or something. Hey guys, so moral of this story, uh, don't forget about your toys because they'll get really angry and they'll do something bad. This kind of reminds me of like Chucky the Killer Doll or something like that. But yeah, thank you Gatuni for sending this story. This was pretty cool. This next one was submitted by Lana. I don't know what to call it, so I'm just gonna read it. Based on true events, I was sitting in my kitchen alone, my sister creepily walking down the hallway. She entered the kitchen, went to the fridge and grabbed the milk, then went to the pantry to get some Fruit Loops. What are you doing, Maddie? I screamed at the top of my lungs. She had a bowl sitting on the bench. She got the milk and poured it in the bowl. After it was half full, she placed a handful of Fruit Loops in the milk. Then she casually got a spoon and ate it. I flat out died. You see, guys, you wanna know what's scary about this? She put the milk before the cereal. And you know, you never put the milk before the cereal. That is cursed. That is a sin. Thank you, Lana, for submitting the story because honestly, this was terrifying. I hope your sister does not make the same mistake again. This next one was submitted by Owen, and they say it's a true story. I'll call this story the following. Once I was trick-or-treating with my best friend. We had been trick-or-treating for about three to four hours, and by the time we started walking home, it was about 12 o'clock. We stopped to look at our candy when we saw someone walking in the street ahead of us. The person was wearing only black. We thought it was some good old Halloween trick, but we were wrong. So as we were on my street, we see this person again, but this time they were following us. We sped up. I whispered to my friend, dude, this person is following us. And my friend responded, I know, get your phone out ready to call 911. So we are about a couple houses away from my house and this stranger is still following us. So me being a stupid person, I asked, why are you following us? The person says, I'm walking home. So I asked, what house do you live in? And they said my exact address. I said, that's where I live. And turns out it was my sister. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, this would have been really scary. Luckily, uh, an actual stranger wasn't following you and they didn't know where you lived and it was just your sister. Thank God that's the case because that would be terrifying. But yeah, I'm glad you're safe and nothing happened to you. Thank you for submitting this story, Owen. Now, this next story that I'm going to be reading was actually submitted by my friend Pi. Just a quick little trigger warning, there is a little bit of uh, graphic stuff in here, so if you want to skip, I'll put a timestamp so you can skip over this story if you want to. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into this story. I'll call this one The Shadow. On Halloween night, you and a friend are watching a movie. About 45 minutes into the movie, your friend says he has to use the bathroom and leaves. About an hour into the movie, the power goes out. You go into the garage to check it out. You find someone had clearly messed with the circuit breaker and had turned off the electricity. You turn everything back on and head to the living room. However, your friend is missing. You figure they must have gone to the room to the bathroom and you knock on the bathroom door. No response. You go to the other bathroom. No response. You call their phone and it goes straight to a voicemail. Now you're worried. Where did they go? You look all over the house for them and cannot find them. The car is still in the driveway so they couldn't have left. You decided maybe they somehow turned the breaker off themselves and they were playing a prank. As that thought passes, the power shuts off again. You go back into the garage and when you feel some sort of liquid on the circuit breaker, you shine your flashlight on it. There's a ton of blood all over the circuit board. You look 
look down, shining your flashlight, and you see your friend in, in pieces. You scream and try to call 911. However, your phone shuts off. You're, you're unable to turn it back on. You realize that you need to get out now. You try to leave through the garage door, but it won't open. You try to go out the front door. However, it wouldn't budge either. You realize you're trapped with no power. You go into your bathroom to cry and plead for help. In the mirror, you see a black figure behind you. Before you can react, it jumps at you. You wake up on the floor, confused. You blacked out. You look at your hands. They're completely black, like pitch black. You realize that you can't leave the house. You then find out you're the new shadow monster. The same one that took your friend, forever trapped inside the body that took you and your friend's life. 30 minutes later, the police arrive. An officer goes inside the house, checking everywhere. He ends up in the garage. You realize he looks vulnerable. You rush him, ripping him into pieces. It's a very gruesome scene. And after the scene, everything goes black. You're no longer the demon, but now merely a ghost, along with your friend. The officer had now become the new monster. Now the cycle is doomed to repeat for all eternity. You should have never messed with that damn circuit breaker. Okay, like, this is actually really good. Like, like props to you, Pi. This is a very interesting story. I really like the concept um, of a shadow creature taking over people's bodies and forcing them to do bad things. I think that's really cool. If something like this was real in real life, like, the world would literally be doomed. But yeah, this was really, really cool, Pi. Thank you for submitting this story. This next one was submitted by Cry. Uh, I'm not sure what to call it, so I'll just read it. Here's a spooky story. I ordered chicken nuggets at McDonald's. 20 piece chicken nuggets. I took my chicken nuggies and didn't pay for it. I walked inside my house, looking in the bag. It's very delicious. I walked into the kitchen and my chicken nuggets fell. Okay, that's terrifying. I would be so upset if I uh, got some chicken nuggets and then they fell, but then again, you didn't pay for them, so I guess that's what you get for stealing them. That was very short. Uh, I just wanted to read that one because I thought it was a little bit funny. But yeah, so this video is getting pretty long, so those were all of the stories that I picked out. I thought they were really cool. But let me know what you guys think of them in the comments. Let me know what your favorite ones are. Let me know your opinions on them, etc. I had a pretty fun time reading these. I don't know if you could tell, but I tried to read it in like a slightly uh, more calm, lower voice to kind of fit the creepy aesthetic, if you know what I mean. So yeah, like I said, really hope you guys like those stories. I had quite a bit of fun reading them. And of course, if you guys want to, you can share your scary stories in the comments down below. And as always, thank you so much to my patrons, Lucas, Sydney Theus, Little Shadow, Stitch, Burnt Tea, Pristine, Quack, Noki, Boiled Eggs, Sid Poo Poo, Warm Freeze, Untitled Citizen, Stork, and Sconer. Thank you guys so much for the support. It means so much to me. You're so swag and epic. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye!